Yes, so I think what we see in many cities nowadays that they are car dominated. We see so many uh, cars on the streets, so it seems to be that uh, we're designing uh, cities for cars rather than cities for people. And I think this is something from the 20th century, we focus too much on getting you know, the cars into the cities, while for the 21st century I think we should focus much more on uh, designing cities uh, for people. And then what we saw in the cities was these wide streets what were actually planned for a lot of fresh air for people walking got filled with cars and so in the end of the 20th century we've seen a lot of cars uh, in this wide street so sometimes it feels like you have motorways running through Barcelona and this is a problem because it causes high air pollution levels a lot of noise uh, the heat island effects that we see in Barcelona um, that are all linked to um, certain diseases and also premature mortality Yeah, if there's one thing that's uh, a positive thing that came out of the um, COVID pandemic or the COVID lockdowns in particular was that people started to realize that our current city models may not be the best in a way. Because what I heard a lot during the lockdowns that when people were saying from, you know, there were not many cars on the street and they were saying, oh, it was so quiet, I could hear the birds singing. Also, they noticed that there was not so much air pollution around. So people thought, from, you know, we see we can have different cities where we don't have this noise, this air pollution all the time. Uh, we need actually what we want is more public space so we can walk and cycle. So we get a much better use of public space, take away public space that we're dedicating to the car, now dedicating it more to people. And that's extremely important because it's uh, important that people get physical activity, for example, that they you know, rather than sit in the car, cycle around um, because that prevents disease and also premature mortality. Yes, we see um, that some people are going to the countryside, trying to leave the city, but you know, the city has still uh, a lot of attraction. I mean, we know uh, in the cities that we have the jobs, we have the uh, cultural events, etc. So I think cities uh, also here in Catalonia keep their attraction. But some people want to go move away. And nowadays it's becoming easier with the teleworking, of course. But then on the other side, people are very social. Um, employers also would like to see people in the office and uh, mingling together. So it may be that they not that we're going to get teleworking you know fully but perhaps a few days per week i think uh, and i very much encourage that particularly to give people more time uh, they don't have to commute um, and also that they can spend more time with the family for example that uh, um, Having all said all this, I mean, my kind of more ideal is that people live close to their work uh, and that work and, and, and the residential, their houses fairly close together so they don't have to commute too much because uh, uh, that's, I think it's better for, for everyone, for health, for the environment, for climate. And what we see is that you know, these compact cities are generally much more efficient um, in terms of energy use, but also uh, they produce less CO2 emissions, what is extremely important for us for the climate crisis to reduce it. I mean, also most of the time they give us more opportunity to walk and cycle. Like in Barcelona, 30% of trips are actually by walking and you can do that in a compact city to walk uh, quickly. Also, of course, it doesn't leave a big footprint um, in, the, in the landscape as such. I mean, that, you know, if you get things together, I mean, a city like Melbourne, it's 100 by 80 kilometers. Um, so it leaves a large um, urban footprint in, in, in the countryside, but it's, it's not so good. I mean, people have to drive by car. 85% of trips are by car. I mean, it's, it's incredible. You know, a city like Atlanta, I think it has the same um, number of inhabitants, it's like here in Barcelona or the Barcelona metropolitan area, 
but it uh, takes uh, covers a land um, area 10 times as large or I think even larger than, than Barcelona and also the CO2 emissions are 10 times as large as in Barcelona so this very sprawled cities are very inefficient way um, to, um, to house people. We've seen that many cities are grey, um, you know, a lot of concrete, a lot of asphalt, uh, leading to uh, urban heat islands. Uh, most of the time what we see that city centres are four or five degrees hotter than surrounding areas. And you know what nature-based solutions can do, for example, by planting more trees, uh, by putting up green walls, by putting up green roofs, is actually reduce this uh, particular temp uh, the temperatures, the heat island effect, and making it a much more pleasant city, but also a city with less disease and mortality. We know that also like green space is very good for, for physical and mental health. We know people are less stressed when there is uh, green space around. Uh, there's more space for restoration. Uh, we know there is re less cardiovascular disease and you know, people are much more active, what is all good for health and reduces premature mortality. You know, what we've seen in many cities in Europe, including in Barcelona, the cycling infrastructure has been really extended. I think there's more than 200 kilometers of cycling infrastructure that's been put in Barcelona over the last five, ten years. And it's extremely t important to get people cycling. And what we see here in Barcelona is more people are cycling. And we've seen the same in other cities uh, in Europe. I mean, and, and so there is this general tendency that, people, uh, that cities try to reduce car use in the city and increase uh, active transportation or public transportation at times as well. Um, of course, I mean, it's a cycling infrastructure, but it's also thinking about new urban models that you can implement. Here in Barcelona, we have the super years, the super blocks. I think this is a very good example which direction we should go. I mean, the super blocks actually reduce car use. Uh, what we have at the moment, the grid system, in, in example, the idea is for the nine blocks to cut four junctions, not allow any cars in sight or motorized traffic. Um, and stimulate active transportation and put more green space in. This is extremely important to reduce uh, car use within the city and also um, increase green space and active transportation which are all very good for health. What we know still is that yes, cities are hotspots of air pollution. The levels are way too high. Last week, the World Health Organization reduced their guidelines for air pollution. Um, and what we now know is that almost everyone is exposed to uh, air pollution levels that are too high, that are damaging health. I think people are aware of it, or a large part of the population is aware of it but it's not so easy to do something about it. Um, I think there is still not enough political will to address this, and that's one of the big problems. There is too much invested interest, in a way, to keep the current situation. My hope is that with the climate crisis, with the climate crisis and with the measures that are put in place um, that reduce fossil fuel use uh, and go to renewable, we also get rid of the um, air pollution problem to a large extent because you know the fossil fuels are one of the main sources for um, for air pollution whether it's coming from for through residential heating or through car use with petrol you know so hopefully if we address the climate crisis we can reduce the air pollution levels and get much cleaner cities so air pollution has a large burden Cities are hotspots, so we need to do something about it. But unfortunately, we haven't found a political will yet, but hopefully it, we will in the, in the future.
So the, um, the sustainable development goals, the urban agenda, I mean, it, it, for 2030 minutes, it, it's extremely important. I think it gives us where we need to get to. Now, cities can play an important role because uh, currently the majority of people live in cities. Uh, uh, if we look here in Europe, 70, 80, 90 percent of people of our population actually live in cities nowadays. So cities in that way should provide the, the, the lead and uh, many of the sustainable development goals deal actually with um, or can be affected by actions that cities actually take. I mean if you look about communities or you think about health, you know many of the cities have in, in principle uh, the possibility to very much affect the sustainable development goals. Unfortunately, not in all cities. We see a SDG officer. I mean, it would be good if the city would have a, a, special, a special technical team to address those. We don't always see that, but it would be important to actually get someone like that and also work across um, the whole city council. Unfortunately, what we see too often is that we have silos within city councils. You know, in my area, if you look at urban planning, you have urban planning, you have transport planning, you have environment, you have health, and these are not really connected. And, you know, what we need to have is a more holistic approach, addressing common problems and also addressing the sustainable development goals all together. I think there is more awareness that we can't keep continuing the way we're doing. I mean, the climate crisis shows us with the flooding, the wildfires, but also within cities, you know, cities dominated by cars. Uh, I hear a lot of people complaining about the air pollution, about the noise, what you're getting. So we need to change. Um, I think the awareness is there. Um, a lot of people are happy to stand up and protest and say we need change. The problem though is that, you know, sometimes everyday life takes over. I mean, and we're not only in this kind of an environmental or climate crisis, but also more an economic crisis and people still need to work and get on with their life. I mean, that uh, here in Spain, it's also for jobs, pay, etc. Um, these everyday things are very important uh, as well. Um, also, there's still a lot of vested interest against making changes. I mean, if you think about the oil companies that are, they have a lot of investments they still want to use, so they don't want to change so quickly from oil to, say, electricity or so. Uh, car companies have the same. I mean, so this, you know, there's a lot of vested interest in keeping the status quo without making the changes. But I hope with the COP26, um, in November in Glasgow that we get more impetus actually to make these changes to address the climate crisis but at the same time also addresses air pollution issues, health, and many measures that are being proposed, you know, a move from fossil fuel to remove, uh, renewable energy, um, changes in our food system, uh, changes in how we live actually are very beneficial to health as well. I think there is more awareness, but we need to have the investments as well um, from, from all different places, from banks, from companies, to actually invest in renewable uh, and sustainable you know, resources and not keep doing the same what we're doing at the moment.